We were just coming down that area where that plane was at there. Larry Lawrence had just gone inside from working in his yard Saturday afternoon when he heard the plane coming closer. You about know when to, when to get ready to jump because the plane had back off the engine and then you know the plane, they're getting ready to jump. Right. And that's what we look for. I've been used to it. But this yesterday was just completely wasn't right. Larry says the plane and the parachuters were far too low in the sky. The noise even had his goats running for cover. I've seen the parachuters there, just right above the barns there, just, I mean, so low. The noise of the plane was so bad. Four skydivers jumped out of the plane safely. Emily Barnett and Heather Mell of Springfield, Tabitha Perkins of Webb City, and Tara Smith of Overland Park, Kansas. But three people were still with the plane. It's a big, big thud. And by the time I got outside, went down there, uh, you could see, you know, it was, it was somebody had, that was gone. One of the uh, jumpers, we believe, uh, had attempted to or was in the process of exiting the plane, as with the others, uh, and quite possibly got tangled up uh, in the plane as it was going down. 36-year-old Marnie Fuller of Walnut Grove and 32-year-old Jennifer Collins of Peculiar were killed in the crash. All six women aboard the plane were licensed professional skydivers with Freefall Express. Some of the survivors and the rest of the skydiving family have gathered here today to mourn their loss. The pilot, Jason Rogg, sustained critical injuries but is improving at the Springfield Hospital. Freefall Express said today the plane had made it to 10,000 feet when the pilot experienced a loss of control. FAA and NTSB investigators collected evidence at the scene today to determine the cause of the crash. He goes, give it to me, and I'm like, no, you know, and that that's what we were arguing about, and I'm like, you're not taking it. So as he's talking, he doesn't see me spinning the broom around, and then that's when I whack him with the broom. Anna Clark beat this would-be robber, and thanks to the quality of these pictures and those at other convenience stores he's accused of robbing, police have put him behind bars. Whoever owned that store, listen to the horrible salesman tell them, here's what you ought to do. And they listened. Jim Morris's company installs security cameras in homes and businesses, including convenience stores. He says sometimes businesses try to save money by cutting down on the number of cameras, but that could cut down on who and what they're able to see. If I want the license plate, that's where you see of these convenience stores, you'll have cameras by the pumps themselves because they're watching that one little area. The difference in security camera quality can be drastic. An older or cheaper model often offers a fuzzy picture, while a newer digital camera can offer a lot more detail. The intelligence of a camera system is in the digital recorder. That's where all the zoom in, the zoom out, the and you can search by date and time. The cameras can be in plain sight or as concealed as this one that looks like a smoke detector. This camera caught the bearded robber clearly in Anna Clark's store. You can see it in the video, you know, that he came in and he had his hands like this and then he puts them back in his pocket real quick. And though some wouldn't recommend taking things into your own hands. What would your husband say? What were you thinking? The cameras get you evidence. They may not stop the bad guy. They're all hopeful this face won't be turning up at another convenience store anytime soon.